I spent almost 500 days at my job at P&G. It was a really good feeling to be part of a large and famous company because I felt like for once I didn't have to meticulously plan out every single detail of my career and I was in a good place and I didn't have to worry too much about the future. I was stable, I was secure and for now this was good enough. But then I decided to quit. In this video, I'd like to tell you that story. For a lot of young business grads, the ultimate goal is to get into a big company like Coca-Cola or P&G and they imagine that if they get to this one goal then everything is going to be perfect and they won't have to plan their career as much anymore. But sadly, life doesn't always work like that. When I got that offer letter from P&G, I still remember I had butterflies for days because I felt like all the hard work that I had done in university to get good grades and then working as an assistant in fashion had finally paid off and I was finally going to be in a place where I could turn my career around and turn it into something great. It's a beautiful world out there Just don't pass on the dare If you have the will and a moment to spare It's a beautiful world out there But unfortunately, things don't always go the way that you imagine them in your head. A lot of times you have this fantasy version of how you think things are going to play out, but things don't work out and sometimes it's just not meant to be. So right off the bat, I loved working there. I would actually wanted to get in for a really long time and had even failed to get to the interview stage a couple of times before. So now, not only had I passed the interview, but I also had the job offer. So I was now not going to take this for granted and really cherish it. I remember seeing the office for the first time and being blown away by all of the free snacks and the really cool breakout rooms that we got to do meetings in. So I thought that the dress code would be formal but it turned out to actually be smart casual so everyone dressed really fun. A lot of the people had kids and families so work-life balance seemed to be a really big priority for everyone and it just felt like an employer that I had never experienced or heard of before. Also, the culture in general was quite friendly. Like at lunchtime, all of the team would have lunch together, um, all the way from the ABM to the director. Most people were quite extroverted and outgoing, and almost everyone that I met was really good at communication. Pay-wise, your starting salary is probably not as high as um, tech or maybe big pharma, but A, you get better work-life balance, and B, because there is profit sharing as you grow in the company, so over the lifetime of a career, you would probably get a comparable amount of money to other industries. The work itself was pretty great as well. You're basically treated like a mini CEO of the brand that you manage from day one and you're expected to know everything about your brand. We were also gifted a lot of products and they had a lot of trainings on basically anything you can imagine. And I remember about a month in thinking, I can't fathom why anyone would ever quit this job. When COVID hit, we went straight into lockdown. There was no way that we could operate an office of thousands of employees. So my experience of working from home was, I think, a lot like other people's where it started out really great, but then gradually got harder and harder working in total isolation. Also, an unexpected result of COVID was that sales for the brand that I managed started going up. So as you know, there were a lot of companies that struggled during that period, but other companies, especially ones that made um, sanitizers or face masks, actually did well because they were creating products that people needed during that time. So similarly, I was managing the grooming category in P&G, and because salons started to shut down, a lot of people now needed to groom themselves at home, and so sales for those products started going up. So business was booming, but our team was made up of only three people and we could feel our workload doubling literally by the day. So we were managing everything from um, figuring out what products we wanted to launch in the markets in the next five years to managing all of the products that were already in the market to all of the different issues that were coming up with the supply chain because as you know, different countries were opening and closing their borders at different times. So that caused a lot of disruptions in the supply chain and it was our job to make sure that the customers were still getting the products as easily as possible. 
Brand management is a really collaborative process. Um, before you launch any product, there's a lot of aligning you need to do first horizontally with other departments, like for example, working with finance to make sure that your profit projections make sense, and then also vertically with your director and the VP and get all of their approvals. So this was a lot easier to do when everyone was coming to the office and all of the teams, at least in the same office, were sitting together and reviewing these plans and working on them together. But it became a lot more challenging when everyone was working from home and everyone's calendars were a lot fuller and so it took a lot more energy and time to basically get to the same results. There would be days that I would be in back-to-back -back meetings all day from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and I would actually then start my real work for the slides and the decks that I needed to churn out for the next day um, in the evening. So I would start work at 7 p.m. and then work into the night. The stress of the intense workload combined with work 10 to 15 hours a day in total isolation started having a real impact on my mental health and I could feel my mental health significantly deteriorating. My physical health was a lot worse as well because I would be too exhausted to work out and then that became a vicious cycle where I wasn't working out so I didn't have a lot of energy and then because I didn't have a lot of energy I wasn't working out. And for me personally, my mental and my physical health are very linked so if I'm not working out that tends to also impact me mentally. This may sound odd, but I didn't see these red flags as enough of a reason to quit. I think because A, I knew that it wasn't just me and all of my teammates were also struggling with the same increase in workload. And B, I knew that this wasn't the default company culture. Um, and it was a direct result of this very unique situation with COVID. Also, our managers were trying to be as supportive as possible because um, sometimes getting from the ideation to the actual launch of a product can literally take hundreds of people um, and they knew that of course so they worked very hard to try to help us and try to see how we could manage the deadlines but the truth is it really wasn't working because this was a situation that the company of course had never been in before I only seriously started thinking about quitting once this um, started impacting my personal relationships and my mood. Um, I vividly remember that if my family or friends wanted to meet up, instead of feeling happy, I would feel annoyed because now those were hours that I would have to take out of my weekend to spend with them, which I could have otherwise spent either catching up on sleep or doing just basic life admin things. I know a lot of people would have chosen not to quit um, and there's this whole mentality around, you know, if you love something, you should stay committed to it and if you love your work, you commit to it even when things get tough and then you get rewarded for it later on in your career. But I noticed that working such long hours and the struggles that I was having with my own mental health was actually taking away the love that I had for my job in the first place. Yeah, I, I think I just got lucky, you know? Um, I finally had the right experience and the interviewers were great. We just clicked, you know? Is this my dream job? I mean, my dream job would probably have a more bodacious bonus you know probably a shorter commute maybe a female ceo but truthfully png is better than the job of my dreams it's real So how did I get to the decision of whether to stay or leave? There's a practical side to it and then there's the bigger philosophical side. Practically, right after university, I knew I wanted to save and invest a part of my income as soon as possible so that if I ever wanted to take a break, I would always have a safety net. So I have an emergency fund, which I don't touch, and I also have savings, which can easily get me through two years, given that I don't eat out every day, and of course it doesn't include any fancy travel plans. I also have a small investment portfolio 
portfolio. It's not in the hundreds of millions or anything, but I know that it's there and it's slowly growing and that gives me some peace of mind. Then looking at the bigger philosophical side to it, I asked myself, why am I so scared to quit? Okay, so I would be leaving a really good company that I can see myself growing in and it might be a red flag to future recruiters to see that I only worked less than two years in P&G. On the other side, I thought about all the reasons that it did make sense to quit. Number one, staying meant that the lows that I was feeling and the anxiety that I had could turn into full-blown clinical depression. And if it wasn't something that was holding me back financially, then my health and my peace should come before a job. Number two, the FMCG market in Dubai seems to be growing over the last few years. And I know this because in the last year alone, um, I had so many different recruiters reach out to me, um, offering me uh, either similar positions or better positions. So I know that there's a lot of opportunity in the market right now in case I want to go back to another firm. Number three, I knew that there were so many other things that I wanted to learn if I did decide to quit. So for example, with this YouTube channel, the skills that I'm picking up like editing and scripting are things that can, I can really use to build a personal brand. And I noticed that this is something that employers, especially in brand management, really look for and value. It really helps you stand out as a candidate. So I wouldn't be wasting my time, but I could actually be doing something that could help me in the long run. And finally, I really thought hard about what is life? Okay, I know that sounds a bit dramatic, but personally, I realized that it's not really my life goal to become CEO of grooming at PNG. I am not a brand manager. It's not who I am. It's just something that I do. I'm really grateful for my work, but I'm also really grateful for my health, my family, my husband, my friends, uh, my education, my hobbies and passions. I wouldn't be who I am without all of these pieces and not just my work. I like to create. That's my passion and I'm really happy creating brands for a company like P&G but I'd also love to create a lot of other things like for example these videos or books or other businesses. I know I have this itch to do a lot in my life so if you have an itch your 20s are the best time to scratch it. Ultimately it was a difficult but calculated decision and I'm a lot happier today than I was a year back. I also recognize that I'm very privileged to be able to take a break. Yes, there was hard work over the last four years, but I got very lucky to be able to do that work by having a good education and by living in a country where our salaries and bonuses aren't taxed, so I was able to save a lot faster. If you're in a similar situation with your mental health, my heart goes out to you. Um, I hope what I shared can resonate with you and maybe it can help you make your own decision of whether to leave or stay. If you're still watching this, there's a good chance that you're either interested in the industry or you already have an offer letter from P&G or a similar firm and you're thinking about whether you should accept it or not. It's honestly a really great company that will turn you into a master of supply chain management and how to build businesses. There's also a list I saw of top CEOs and business leaders that all started their careers working as a brand manager at P&G. Um, I'll link it somewhere below. It's no secret that they're really good at churning out business leaders. Even if you want to start your own company someday, it's a great chance for you to see behind the scenes of how they do it, um, their workflow, the softwares that they use, um, how they compete and so on. And it's going to give you this toolkit of knowledge and skills that you can then apply to your own ventures. I hope you succeed at whatever you choose to do, but remember that work is not everything. There's probably so many great things and so much great work that you'll do in your life. So don't take one job too seriously. It's not the end, it's only the beginning.